what camera lenses lighting you should buy as a beginner it is probably the number one questions that I get every single time on Instagram and in this video I want to go through these three main elements and how you should approach your buying activity What's up everyone, if you don't know me, my name is Simone and I'm an Italian professional photo videographer. And in this video, we're gonna talk about camera, lighting and lenses. But I'm gonna do it in a particular way because you know, I don't wanna really mention a specific product. I'm gonna show you exactly what I have here, but I would like to let you understand more about the general options that you have in the market right now. Without further ado, let's talk about the first things that you wanna have, which is a camera. When talking about camera, it's super difficult to suggest a camera because it really depends on your level of photography and also your needs as a photographer. Are you shooting only videos? Are you shooting only photos? Are you shooting in low light situation? Do you want something that is light that you can put in your pocket and go for running gun shooting? Or do you want maybe something heavier when you're shooting videos? It really depends, but I wanna give you a general idea. And this is my opinion. Oh, by the way, you're probably not gonna like this, but my personal opinion is that if it's under $600, don't buy any camera because this guy is already better than like a $500 camera. I started just with a phone and then I saved up money and decided to go for a better camera after a few months and the reason is that with this guy you can shoot raw photos today and not only if you have an iPhone 13 of 12 I don't have any of those but you can use the app Lightroom mobile and then activate the raw format on the top when you're using the built-in camera in the app and doing this will allow you to really edit photos in depth with amazing colors what I'm saying is don't waste your money on a lower budget camera because probably your phone can do better than that so the following step when you feel you're ready to buy a camera, there are a big difference between cameras. There is the APS-C sensors and the full frames. The full frames, which is the one that I'm using right there, which is a Sony a7 III, or this one, which is a Sony a7S Mark II, means that there is a bigger frame inside, which is this guy right here. Now, this camera is broken, so don't worry about getting dust or whatever. And when you have a bigger frame, you'll be able to take, let's say, better photos and has more capabilities. Whereas an APS-C sensor, which which is this one, which is a Sony Alpha 6400, has a smaller sensor and therefore will be able to capture a little bit less details, let's say, because I don't want to go into technical aspects. But the difference is that these cameras are much cheaper than full frame cameras. So in general, you want to go for an APS-C sensor that costs around maybe $700 to $900. So as soon as you have a little bit of budget, I will go for something like this one. It costs around, I think new one is around $900, but I bought this one actually very recently, secondhand for 600 euros here in Italy. And also lenses are much cheaper for APS-C sensors comparing to full frame. And these are already amazing cameras that can do whatever you want. But if you have more budget, then I would suggest to go for something like the a7 III or the a7C, which are, let's say, 1,500 plus. I paid mine around $1,400 last year, so you may find a little bit cheaper right now, depending obviously in the country you're in. Or if you have a lot of budget, you can go for the most expensive, let's say, cameras, which are now the A7S Mark III or the A7R Mark IV, which are for S's for videos and RR for photos, and these are much more expensive. Now, let's talk about lenses. At the beginning of my photography journey, I had no idea if I should have gotten maybe a zoom lens or a fixed focal length. Now, after a few years of experience, I can tell you that the best way to improve Improve your photography and to force yourself and your creativity is to get a focal length and the cheapest option is actually the 50 millimeter whether you're using Canon Nikon Sony whatever there is always a 50 millimeter f 1.8 that you can get and it's super super cheap for what you get and as a second lens you get something like this which is a 24 70 millimeter and this is actually the only lens that I use when I travel I don't get anything else if I want to stay light I'm just going to use this one because it's the most versatile lens that you can get 
ever. The one that I have is actually a 2875 f2.8 by Tamron because they do amazing lenses compatible for my Sony full frame E-mount and the quality comparing to the GM by Sony is very very similar but at a fraction of its price. In fact I have all my three main lenses uh, from Tamron from the same series of Tamron because they actually they are actually amazing and again for a very cheap price comparing to the most expensive one. As a third lens that I would suggest suggest is a wide lens. So you can get a 16 to 35 millimeter or like this one, a 70 to 28. The 16 to 35 by Sony is extremely expensive, but this one is actually not that expensive because as a lower range, so it's less versatile, but it works as a wide lens. But as I said, the majority of the times I always use the 24 to 70 and this one, you can go down to 17 millimeters, which is actually pretty wide. And if you want to go for the fourth lens, which is the last lens that I would buy, is actually this one, which is the biggest one that I have, and it's the 70 180 by Tamron, still same series, or if you want to go for the Sony 70 to 200. And this lens is amazing for portraits. It has that compression of background and that kind of bouquet effect that is really amazing. But again, I will go with this one for last or unless you're gonna go it for the third one, maybe instead of having the wide one. This is totally up to you. Now we cover a little bit of cameras and lenses. Now I wanna talk a bit about lighting because lighting is actually even more important than cameras and lenses because if you can get the proper lighting, even with a cheaper camera, like could be a crop sensor camera, you could actually achieve amazing, amazing results. And therefore, when you have a little bit of budget, invest in some proper lighting. The smallest one, the cheapest one you can get is actually a very simple ring light, which is useful for loads of different situations. Some YouTubers, some photographers hate the ring light. I think it's not that bad. If you don't have budget, I think it's a great, great option. I've used it quite a lot. I've used it to grow my TikTok and it's actually super useful to learn photography. And you can find any kind of alternative that you want on Amazon, or if you want for better option, you can go for nut light ring lights, which are a little bit more expensive. The second step would be to have an Amazon softbook. Again, it's extremely cheap. You can get any softbook on Amazon they're pretty much all the same and they will help you a lot achieving much better results than with the ring light if you don't have any budget to go for the next step which is actually getting a small light like this nut light force 60. And if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you know that this is actually the main light that I use every single time, especially when I travel, because as you can see, you can just fit it in your pocket. And the best way to get this one is with its own softbox. So it's a small softbox that can actually help you have amazing, amazing soft light in your face when you're taking portrait. If you're maybe shooting a car, this is not the best because actually it's a small light, but for this price, I would 100% invest in these small lights because the next step will be having a professional light, a massive light like the Forza 200, the key light that I have right here with another soft light that is much more expensive for higher production or for just lighting up further away subjects, let's say. If you have the budget having such a huge light, it will help a lot with the diffusion with having very, very soft light and soft shadows in your face or in your products, or literally for whatever kind of shooting you're doing. Now, is it worth it maybe upgrading from a Forza 60 to a Forza 200? The answer is depends on what you're doing. If you're just doing YouTube videos like I am doing, this one is amazing. You don't need anything else than this one because I use it when I'm in London, I use just the Forza 60 and I don't have that big ass light there. So it's totally up to you. Now, we've talked a lot about these main elements, cameras, lenses, and light, and I hope you have a clear idea what you should go for, but the next step would be to invest in some accessories. And if you want to know more, I put here my top 10 accessories that every photographer should have. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.